Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you happen to be joining us for this yoga class. My name is Brenton and the name of today's yoga class is called Not A Yoga Class. And this is because it may not feel like a traditional flowing yoga class might where you do a little bit of passive stretching to warm up and then you get right into the nitty gritty of the sun salutations and then you do a bunch of you know very standard um, standing pose sequences and then you wind down with more passive stretching at the end it's gonna feel a little bit different than that but it's all still going towards and gearing up towards the real purpose of yoga which is to create order balance harmony in our lives and the way that it is doing that is by helping us become a good manager of our bodies so that you feel empowered when you get out of this practice and you feel like you have the confidence and the understanding of how to move in ways that help your body work and feel better day after day. So when you are ready to join me, we'll go ahead and get started on our backs. When you first come down onto your back here, you can just move around in any way that feels good to you. And this is your time to start to spread attention throughout your entire body, like light filling a room. You want to make sure that no part of your body is ignored. No part of your body has too much attention in it. Then settle into your breathing so that you're breathing in and out through your nose. It's very light. You can't hear it necessarily. Maybe that's a little bit different than some of the yoga classes you go to where you're told to hear your breath but let your breath be a little bit lighter, lower in the body. So you're breathing in the abdomen, abdominal breathing will just help stimulate the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic nervous system. So you're in more of a rest and digest state, even as we start to amp up the practice. Now consider those two things, your attention and your breathing as sort of the baseline, the foundation of your practice, and then fit your movement into that baseline. Don't let that baseline get disrupted. So when you're ready, go ahead and settle your feet on the ground wherever is comfortable for you. Press into your feet and lift the hips off the ground for a low bridge pose. So the point of this is to really get the glutes on and fired. We want the glute firing to be really automatic for us throughout our practice. So we don't have to try so hard to get them to turn on. One of the ways to make them automatic is to do it at the beginning and to do it for a little bit of time here. So what we'll do is we'll just pulse the pelvis a little bit up and down from the ground, trying to negotiate a good feeling position in the low back. So you don't want your low back to feel pinched <clears throat> or overly strained or anything like that. And then that will put the muscular work into the glutes in a particular way, and they'll be more likely to work for you that way throughout your practice. So let's see if we can hold the pelvis up. And now pay attention to your rib cage. Shift your rib cage down away from your chin so that the front of your body feels like it's closing towards the back of the body. Your front pelvis is drawing towards your front ribs and your front ribs are drawing towards your front pelvis. Now keep all of that, keep the glutes on here as we lift the arms up to the sky. And now we really wanna do a good job of getting the wrists really warmed up here for weight bearing. So build your fists and we'll just flick out at the wrists many times for about 30 seconds or so. You want to do this enough that you actually feel the forearm muscles get a little bit pumped here. And so what I often see in yoga classes is just like, you know, you just right away get on the wrists and that can work well for some people. But I think for a lot of other people, it feels a little bit better to prep the wrists, get the muscles of the forearms nice and active so that they can help and assist you with your weight bearing. Okay, so reach the fingers up to the sky there. Feel the rib cage again shift down towards the pelvis as you start to lengthen the arms towards an overhead position, beginning to stretch out through the armpits and the upper side waist, keeping the chin tucked into the throat there 
And again, the ribs shifting down towards the pelvis. Hopefully you're still feeling those glutes on. We're almost there. And lo slowly lower everything down. Keep your face nice and soft. Your jaw is soft. Your tongue is soft. Now we'll focus on turning on the anterior core, so the front of the body. Keep your feet pressing down and forward as you interlock your hands behind your head. Keep your chin tucked into your throat and your neck muscles turned off as you lift up off the shoulder blades. So once you get up there, really drop the head into the hands. Pull your rib cage down to the floor so you're really using those abdominal muscles to lift up. And even though you're using the abdominal muscles there, you can still breathe. Nothing about that changes. The jaw is soft, the tongue is soft, the face is soft. And get up enough that you're just shaking ever so slightly in that abdomen. Keep pressing those feet down and forward. So the same way we turn on the glutes, we turn on the abdomen. Go ahead and release that down to the floor. So really trying to get the sense of the abdomen lifting you up off the shoulder blades as you come up again. Head nice and soft, chin tucked into the throat there. Keep your right foot pressing down and forward. And if you're ready for more complexity, lift your left knee up. Push the heel forward so that the leg is playing an edge towards straight. Keep lifting up off the shoulder blades as you pull the rib cage down, chin soft into the throat. Return the left foot to the floor and release. Easy does it. Come on up off the shoulder blades again, head soft into the hands. Keep your left foot pressing down and forward as you pull the right knee up, heel pressing forward. Keep pulling the abdomen down. Sacrum's on the floor, but tailbone slightly lifts. Lift up, right foot down, and release. All right, let's keep going here. Let's pull up off the shoulder blades, head nice and soft into the hands there. Option to stay here or lift the left leg up again. If you're lifting here, maybe start to turn the leg in the hip socket. So actively, internally, and externally rotating that leg. Feeling the sitting bones hug toward each other. Sacrum on the ground, tailbone lifting up, relax the head, lift up off the shoulder blades. Taking that left foot down to the ground, release and relax. Okay, last time here, you know it's your last time, so give it a good, some good effort as we lift up off the shoulder blades, head soft into the hands there, chin tucked to the throat. Keep your feet pressing down and forward. Option to lift your right foot up. And then from here, if you want, swiveling the leg in the socket. Keep the chin tucked to the throat. Use the abdomen to lift up. And as you feel ready, release. All right, we made it through. Feel how nice and taut and activated all that front abdomen is. We wanna keep that nice and taut as we roll up to a seat with the legs nice and wide. With the legs nice and wide here, decide what you wanna do for the next 20 or 30 seconds or so. Maybe you wanna stretch forward. Maybe that doesn't feel so great for you. So maybe you like to go back and kind of move your pelvis around a little bit. There's lots of things you could do, twisting, side bending over the legs. So just choose your own adventure. All right, we have one more zone of the body we really want to turn on and activate before we get into some things that maybe will look and feel more like sun salutations, and that is the shoulders, the arms, and the upper back. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and come over. Elbows down for dolphin, hands clasped or wide, elbows narrow under the shoulders. Relax the chin as you lift up off the knees any amount. The knees can be bent. You might like a wider base of support there. You might like to tip up onto the tippy toes. We'll really push down through the forearms and shift the ribs up over the shoulders. Now breathe nice and steady and easy here. Remember the goal here is to just get these parts of the body activated, turned on so that they're a little bit more automatic for you. Sometimes in yoga we do a lot of these end range positions with the joints and it can be easy to rely on passive forces like leverage or gravity 
So here you get your strength involved, then it's more likely that your strength creates your shapes for you. Let's go ahead, lower down to the knees there. Easy does it. Coming up to the hands, letting the hands be an active base of support, not a passive base of support. So they're gripping the floor, drawing energy up the arms into the shoulders. When you're bearing weight on the hands, make sure that the shoulders are externally rotating. That means that the pits of the elbows are trying to roll towards the pinky side of the hands. So test that out for you. Lifting the spine into neutral and into the shoulder blades. We can peel the knees up off the ground an inch, seeing how that works for us. Shifting the pelvis up and back to first downward facing dog. Keeping the chin nice and soft. Make sure there's muscular activation in your hands all the way up the arms, into your chest, into your upper back. And so in downward facing dog, we don't wanna feel like we're slamming the chest back to the thighs. Rather, we wanna feel like the arms are trying to lift us forward to plank pose. And that's gonna set the shoulders in a really strong position. Pushing off the hands one at a time. We'll walk ourselves all the way back to the feet there at the back of the mat. It's your first forward fold. So you decide how you want to be here. If you want to bend your knees or perch your elbows up on your thighs or on an ottoman in front of you. That's all fair game. Hmm. Easy does it. Now, if your spine can handle a nice slow roll up, bend your knees. Feel the front of the body curl into the back of the body as you slowly roll your way all the way up. Setting yourself at the back of the mat. You might take the feet underneath the hip points there, trying to find neutral pelvis, neutral ribs, neutral chin as best you understand that. And as you feel ready, we'll lift and lower the arms a few times. So if you feel like you don't really understand what neutral means in your pelvis or in your ribs, I do have classes for that on my YouTube channel. One's called neutral pelvis, the other's called free range ribs. So make sure you practice both of those because that'll get you into the place where you hopefully understand that a little bit more. Okay, and then from here, we'll take the hands down to the hips. Keeping the spine as it is, as we soften a little bit of bend into the knees here. And now we want to just move at our hip joints. We're gonna try to maintain our spine nice and long, especially the low back. We're gonna try to keep that nice and stable as we tip forward over the thigh bones any amount, really sitting back into those glutes. And then the glutes help drive us all the way back up. So you just go down however far you go down. Maybe you go down more than me, maybe you go down less than me but tap out wherever your spine feels like it needs to get involved because your hips mobility has uh, maxed out for the day. And if you just work with your hip mobility here and you decouple it from the spine, first your brain starts to understand that your hips are different than your back. And your back will start to feel better. It will thank you for that. But then, because your hips are starting to understand what their job is, your nervous system will give you more mobility over time. So just working our hip hinges here, this is similar to the, you know, what you might call Ardha Uttanasana or halfway lift. And so find your hip hinge, your halfway lift, and then arms in front with the arms pulled into the shoulder sockets, front body plugging in. And from here, as long as the back feels okay, we can stretch the arms out like wings, trying to keep the whole front of the body nice and contained. Taking the arms down, doing that a few times. As you move the arms out, watch the rib cage because it's gonna wanna crack open to the floor like a nut. And your job is to keep it pulling in and to the back. Okay, from here, releasing down over the legs all the way back of the neck nice and soft. We'll go ahead and slowly walk ourselves forward to downward facing dog. So the hands nice and active there. Again, the arms working as if they're trying to draw you forward into plank. And now let them actually win that battle as you shift the shoulders forward over the wrists. 
When you do that, your shoulder blades set the height of the pose, so lift your ribs into your shoulder blades. Your pelvis is at that same height. We'll tip the pelvis up and back to downward facing dog. We'll do that a few times. Moving ourselves nice and forward, keeping strong activation through the hands, through the arms, into the chest, into the armpits, I can even feel that, the upper back. Okay, after this last one, coming all the way forward, keep your chest this lifted as you take the knees down to the ground. And then from here, we're just gonna bend the elbows two inches, up and down a few times, just playing around with the idea of a push-up. And then however you like to come all the way down to the floor. When you come down, releasing the tops of the feet, tenting the fingers nice and wide, maybe off the yoga mat with the elbows lifting. Push down into the finger pads as you peel off the ground any amount with your chest. And we can do that just a couple of times here. So we really wanna make sure that we're working in within a range that is acceptable to the low back where the low back feels really good. Feeling like the whole front of the body is peeling up off the floor like a sticker. So no piece of the front of the body is sort of blowing out in front. Okay, and then from here, hands underneath the armpits, roll the shoulders away from the ground. We're gonna see if we can stay this organized in your chest as you push up to the knees and then tuck the toes, lift off the knees, downward facing. Okay, from here, we'll push off the hands one at a time to walk all the way back to the feet there, chin soft into the throat. We'll see if we can find our hip hinge from the bottom up. So can you find that little halfway lift? Arms in front, if it feels okay on your back to stretch the arms out like wings, we'll go there. And then we'll push the hands back to the pelvis and then keep the spine nice and long. Use your glutes to stand you up. Press down through your feet. Reach your arms wide and high all the way up to the sky. And as you feel ready, hands down through the heart. One more time, we'll breathe in. We'll reach all the way up. As we feel ready, we'll hinge forward at the hips, walking the hands all the way forward to our downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, you choose the distance between your feet and your hands. And again, it's like your arms are working to move you forward to plank. Now let them win. Move yourself forward, shoulders over the wrists there. Knees tap down to the ground. Keep yourself nice and lifted into the shoulder blades. And then bending at the elbows, slowly lowering all the way down. Releasing through the tops of the feet there. Releasing the hands back, we'll float the legs off the ground for a locust pose. We want to make sure the low back feels good, so we need to use our glutes, front body closing in, front ribs to the pelvis. We'll swim through the legs here, one at a time, up and down, really using the muscles on the backs of the legs, the calves, the hamstrings to generate that movement. If you like, you can lift your right knee, keep your right knee lifted. Bend the foot towards the glute there, really contracting through that right hamstring, making sure that the low back feels nice and long, stretching it back, doing it on the other side. If this doesn't feel good for you for any reason, just stick with your little swimmers. And you'll just try to work nice and slowly, really getting those hamstrings to learn how to do their job. We stretch them a lot in yoga, but if you have tight hamstrings and they feel tight, Maybe what they're asking for is to be used, for their strength to be utilized. And their job is to bend your legs. And they help extend your hips, which is what we do when we lift the knee. So keep that knee lifted as it bends in. Hands down underneath the armpits, chest nice and open. Stay organized as you push up. Tuck the toes, lift up and back, downward facing. We'll go ahead and push off the hands, walking all the way back to the feet. See if you can find your hip hinge from the ground up. Arms in front. If you like that arms out like wing situation, you can do that. Then pushing the hands back to the pelvis. Use your legs to stand you upright. Ground down. Reach all the way out and up with the arms. Hands down to the pelvis. Keep yourself nice and lifted, not toppling over to one side as you 
uh, lift the left leg out to the left side. So here's what it looks like. Boom, a little hip ab abduction there. So instead of toppling over, counterbalancing with your skeleton, we want to use our strength. So we want to stay as upright as we possibly can, really getting that left glute to do the work for us. Go ahead, walk yourself forward. Lift your right leg up. Get yourself nice and lifted. Your standing leg is a really strong base of support for you there. We'll go ahead and walk ourselves up. Left leg. Now here we're gonna hold, we're gonna see if we can pulse at the top of that range there. Pulsing at the leg, but keeping the pelvis nice and still. So keeping that leg at the top of the range. Taking that left leg forward on the right side. Top, pulsing at the top of the range. One foot by the other at the top of the mat here. Feel how your legs feel and respond to all that work. Reach the arms wide and high all the way up and then hinge at the hips as you come down over the legs. Ground the hands, keep your shoulders forward over your wrists as you step the feet back one at a time to plank. Now your choice, knees up or down on the ground as we slowly lower. Releasing through the tops of the feet there. Let's go ahead, slide the hands back underneath the elbows, rolling the shoulders a few times. While you do this, secure your glutes, make sure your low back feels nice and long and stabilized. The front body closing in on itself. With the shoulders rolled away from the ground, hover the hands, back of the neck nice and long. And then we'll activate our shoulder extension, pushing back at the elbows. Keep your wrist extended, hovering the hands underneath, and then doing that a few times. So really getting some nice, active shoulder extension going here. This is the position that your shoulders want to be in at the bottom of that push-up. So take inventory when you're lowering down to the ground next time. Let's go ahead and take the hands down to the floor. Keep your shoulders nice and lifted. Stay organized as you push up to the knees. And then tuck the toes. Lift up and back, downward facing. Let's push off the hands one at a time to walk all the way back to the feet there at the back. Find your hip hinge from the ground up, arms in front. If you like arms reaching out to the side, you can do that. Pushing the hands back to the pelvis. Ground your feet, standing all the way up. Reaching the arms wide and taking them down in front. Here we go, we'll toe our little heel bops here. Now really working the ankles, the feet, the calves. When you do your heel bops, try to get right up over the big toe ball mound of the feet. And if you feel like you're doing this pretty well, you can pick up the pace. Mm -hmm. You can pick up the pace even more. Okay. Now from here, we're going to see if we can hold ourselves in our heel bop position. If you need to kind of walk around to get your balance, you do that. We're going to stagger walk forward. Keeping the heels as lifted as possible over the big toe ball mound. Stagger walk back. When we get to the back of the yoga mat there, both heels down. Find a, a leg position that works for you. Sit on down for chair. Chair a little bit bounce here. When you bounce, make sure your low back feels like it's in a nice neutral baby back bend position and that that position's not really moving. So instead feel like the joints of your legs, your ankles, knees and hips are like an accordion, Ooh, up and down. All right, so we're just mobilizing those joints, getting them used to the squat. Okay, pressing down, coming all the way up, come back to your heel bobs. Okay, and you do the pace that works for you. And then we're going to come up, stagger walk forward. Stagger walk back. So a little locomotion training, coordination training, stagger walk forward. When you get to the top, see if you can hold it there, maybe a little bit wider. We're going to see if we can taking the hands in front, slide down to a little bit of a chair pose with the heels lifted. 
So keep breathing here, my friends. Face nice and soft, chin soft, tongue soft. We're just gonna go down and up a few times. And it doesn't have to be a huge range of motion, but we're really getting into those feet and ankles tonight. So if you walk all day or if you sit all day, it's good for both. <laughs> and as you feel ready, slowly lower the heels. Feel that burn as you forward fold over the legs. Easy does it there. And in this forward fold, you can kind of pedal out your feet a little bit. Let's go ahead, take ourselves back to plank. And then you decide how you come down. Coming all the way down. Release the tops of the feet there, taking the forearms down, elbows underneath the shoulders, but the front body still feeling like it's connected and drawing into the shape. Breathe with movement here as you tuck the chin, you pull the heart up to the shoulder blades, belly to spine, front pelvis lifts off the floor for a modified forearm plank. And then slowly unrolling ourselves down, staying nice and connected. Doing that a couple of times. Holding here, option to tuck the toes, lift the knees for forearm plank. Holding here for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly take one knee down. Second knee down, perching up to the hands there underneath the shoulders. The toes can point back and they point straight back so that the ankle is not sickling or rolling in or out there. We'll see if we can load the feet in a pointed position. So rooting down, lifting the knees, tapping the knees down, lifting the knees, tapping the knees down. Maybe two more times. This time as you lift the knees, roll over the feet one at a time. Downward facing dog. Now this time we'll slowly start to walk the feet up towards the hands. And if you can take small baby steps, what you'll do is you'll start training the weight bearing position, the weight shift forward into the hands. If you lose the mobility to do this, just peel your hands up off the floor at some point. So when you walk all the way up to the top of the mat, releasing through the back of the neck there, lifting up, to your hip hinge, arms in front, stretching the arms out like wings, pushing the hands back to the pelvis, and then using your legs to drive you up to stand. Ground down through the feet, reach the arms wide and high, settle the arms down in front. Here we go, reaching the arms all the way up, this time taking the hands down to the pelvis. I'm gonna step the left foot back, so we're lunging on the right side, Choose a short enough stance where you can bend the back knee and get the pelvis in neutral so you're not splaying forward like this, right? Get yourself nice and neutral. You get your ribs pulled up over the pelvis and then choose an arm variation that works for you, whether it's arms in front or tracking towards the overhead position. When they go to the overhead position, don't take your ribs with you. Keep your ribs pulling down to the pelvis. All right, from here, We'll take the hands to the heart. We're going to step forward on the front foot and drive the left knee up in front of the body. When we do this, we'll start bumping it in the hip socket a couple of times, trying to decouple that from the low back. So keep your low back in neutral. Keep yourself nice and lifted over your pelvis so you're not leaning back and putting, you know, using leverage your, your skeleton to create your movement. We'll step the left foot back so we're high lunge taking the arms up, and then as you feel ready, press down, drive the left knee forward. We'll do this a couple of times here. And then the next time that you take the left knee back, here we go, we'll take the hands together. We're gonna turn open towards the wide edge of the mat and lunge toward the back. So we're bending into that left knee for a side lunge we'll cruise left to right here. Really using the feet in sort of like a push-pull action. Pushing and pulling us from one side to the next. And if you feel like you can manage a half squat, 
or they, I think they call this skandhasana in yoga, you can bend into that left knee coming all the way down. Whether or not that heel lifts, it may. Okay, from here, we're gonna come back through center. We're gonna ground down to the feet, rolling ourselves all the way up. Here we are, we're in horse. So we're turning the heels in, the toes open, only as much as we can keep the pelvis upright. So keep ourselves nice and upright here, pulsing in the joints a little bit, taking the arms nice and wide. While we do that, everything gets together in the core. So now pulse your arms back and forward in space a couple of inches, trying to get the shoulder blades to mobilize and turn on the wake up on the upper back. So keep the chin nice and tucked. We're doing this, but we're decoupling it from the ribs. So keep your ribs out of the movement, okay? Something I love to do in yoga is to hop a lot to build some elastic recoil. Also, there's lots of hopping and yoga movements. So come on up out of this, turn the toes more forward, heel toe the feet a little bit more in, driving the arms up. So here we go, we'll go out and in for some jumping jacks. We'll jump the feet in, and we'll go out and in just a few times. So if this isn't gonna work for you, the hops, just do step outs. And so you can do the same motion, but you just step out one at a time with each leg. Keep breathing. Okay, here we go. We're here, heels in, toes out. We're back to the horse. Feel your heart, it's a totally different energy there, right? We're gonna go ahead, turn it back to the front. And from the front, we'll drive the left knee up in front of the body. And then we'll work here taking the hands, one to the front pelvis, one to the front ribs. Try to get yourself in neutral here. We're gonna try to hinge over that front leg any amount and coming back up. So the space between your hands, your hands are a mapping device here. And your goal is to try to keep all of that nice and steady and stable. So from here, stretch your left leg back to a Warrior three, set the left leg on the ground, hands down, we'll pick the right leg up, stretching it up to the sky, one-legged dog. One-legged dog, we'll move the knee in and out from the torso, trying to keep the entire body in a nice stable downward facing dog. If you'd like to turn this into some controlled hip circles, nice and slowly starting to move that right leg through a full circular range of motion, so you get lots of mobility benefits in that right hip and lots of stability benefits in the left hip. Go a couple of times in both directions. As you feel ready, both feet down on the ground there. Here we are, the stand in a downward facing dog. And then one more time we can start to walk the feet forward to the hands, starting to weight shift more over the wrists. And again, you choose, you know, or your body chooses where your mobility um, maxes out. So you just pull the hands up at some point. Lifting up halfway, arms in front. Reaching the arms out like wings, if that feels good. Pushing the hands back to the hips. And using the legs to stand all the way up. Ground down through your feet. Reach the arms wide and high to the sky. Taking the hands down in front. Hands to the pelvis. We're going to step the right foot back. So we're lunging on the left. Again, a short enough stance that you can get yourself nice and lifted up over the pelvis there. Choose an arm variation that's gonna work for you and your shoulders. So remember your working shoulder movement without working the ribs. We'll go ahead and take the hands down in front, stand on the front leg, driving the back leg up, bumping it out a few times in front of us, trying to get some nice active hip flexion going in that right leg. Okay, as you feel ready, we'll take it back, stretching the arms all the way up. Stand on that front leg, load it, draw the back knee up. Doing that a couple more times there. And then this next time, when we step her back, we're gonna step it back, turning it open to the side, 
lunging into that right leg towards the back of the mat and just cruising, cruising, bruising, left to right. If you can manage the half squat into the right leg, you can do that. And then coming back through center, coming all the way up to horse pose here. This time we'll build fists. We'll take the elbows up at the shoulder height. It's similar movement to what we just did as we pulse a little bit back, really trying to wake up that upper back, the shoulder blades up there. Okay, keeping that shoulder, the elbows up at shoulder height. As we feel ready, hands together, turning the toes forward, heel toeing in, and starting our jumping jacks. So out and in. Landing with soft knees. Still breathing nice and low into the abdomen. Chin stays tucked into the throat. Okay, land wide. Here we go. Turning forward towards the front. Here we are. We're going to reach the right leg up in front of the body. Use the hands to map the pelvis and the ribs as we hinge. Doing that a couple of times. So loading that standing leg. As we feel ready, taking that right leg back, hands down, left leg stretches up, one-legged dog. We can move the left knee into the torso and back. Doing that a couple of times, again, trying to move from the hip, not the back. If you want your slow, controlled hip circles, you can take a few of those. And watch where you just kind of fall through the movement with gravity. Try to slow that down. A couple of times on both sides. As we feel ready, both feet next to each other. And from here, we'll push off the hands. We'll walk her all the way back. Nice and easy does it here. Maybe even interlocking the hands behind the head. Chin tucks into the throat. Nice and easy. Hmm. If your spine can manage a nice slow roll up, bend your knees. Slowly curl the front body to the back body as you roll all the way up. Maybe even opening the elbows, the chest, the vision up at the top. And if it feels good for you to close the elbows in, tuck the chin and start rolling the spine all the way down. Don't be afraid of making it really ugly. And as far as uh, yoga alignment is concerned, because in yoga alignment, we don't often talk about folding forward with a flex spine. But as long as it feels OK, it's a good movement. Pressing down, coming all the way back up. Oh, and opening ourselves all the way up. Stretching the arms all the way up to the sky there. Here we go, hands together at the back. Let's step the left leg out so we're abducting that hip. We're going to pulse at the top of the range there. Walk that left foot forward. Right leg, we're going to pulse at the top of the range. Walking the right foot forward, left foot steps. This time, maybe you roll the hip in the socket, trying to unglue the thigh bone from the pelvis. Stepping that forward, taking the right leg up, and again, maybe this time, rolling the thigh bone in the socket, trying to unglue it from the pelvis. One foot by the other at the top of the mat. Here we go. We'll reach the arms all the way up to the sky. As you feel ready, hinging forward, bending into the knees there, taking the left foot back, knee down, toes tucked if you can manage that, coming up to a low lunge. So just try to manage this position to begin with, where you're kind of right over that back knee. So in, in yoga, a lot of times, like we want to feel like this, right? But 
for, for today, because this is not a yoga class, get yourself nice and lifted over that back knee. Hopefully you start to feel a stretch through that left leg, taking the arms all the way up. From here, we'll go ahead, take that left hand down, and then turn open on that left shoulder blade. Keep pulling the hips back away from the pose and really turning from that rib cage. If you want, you can tuck the back toes and lift the knee off the ground. If that feels okay. And then from here, we're gonna take the right hand down, turn open, side lunge to the left, to the back of the mat there. A little pulse into that leg so that the inseam of the right leg gets a little sensation. And then we'll go ahead, roll ourselves all the way up, turn ourselves to warrior two to the right. So bending the right toes forward, we wanna just make sure that the, all the lower body joints feel like they're in a good supported position, that they're not maxed out in any way. So try to negotiate that for yourself, pelvis upright, ribs upright over that, arms out. And then we can feel like we're squeezing in, hugging up at the sitting bones as we reach back over the back of the pelvis and forward over the front of the pelvis. So just mobilizing through the trunk a little bit, trying to feel a sense of all of the abdominal organs hugging in. And you're just moving above a nice steady pelvis. So the pelvis isn't moving and that way it's directing Oh, more of the motion to the ribs. Okay. From here, we'll go ahead, come onto the back toes. So we're looking forward again into our high lunge. We'll pull the left knee up in front of the body. And you can stay with those single leg hip hinges if you like, or we can hinge forward, hold the position, push the left foot back, so we're more in a warrior three. Breathing here a little bit. If you feel like you wanna spice this up, bending straight in the standing leg, curling the back knee in and out of the abdomen, that's all fair game. And then from here, we're gonna take the left foot down, the left knee down, we're gonna stand on the left hand and we're gonna move the right leg back to a half side plank. So Try to catch your balance here. It's very balance tricky. You're really gonna feel it in that left glute to support you. If you got the balance, we're gonna flex the right, whoop, flex the right hip, pulling the knee into the abdomen, pushing the leg back. Doing that a couple of times, it's really tricky here. And then from here, turning the position down to the ground, stepping the left foot back, plank pose, We're lifting up into the shoulder blades, however you like to come all the way down. Once we're all the way down, chin nice and tucked here, we'll stack the hands, drop the forehead down, and press your pubis bone, if you know what that is, into the floor, as you peel the abdomen and the navel up to the spine. Imagine your whole back body is like an inner tube, and you're inflating that inner tube with every inhale. As you feel ready, hands underneath the shoulders. Roll the shoulders up, stay nice and organized. Press up to plank and up to downward facing. Okay. This time, however, you'd like to come up to the top of the mat. You could step, you could also hop your feet. So it's all good, however you like. Coming up to your hip hinge, arms in front. If you like to stretch the arms out like wings, pushing the hands back to the pelvis, and then using your legs to stand you all the way up. Reach the arms all the way up to the sky, and taking the hands down in front. Here we go, reaching the arms all the way up, hinging forward over the legs. From here, we're gonna bend the knees, step the right foot back, knee down to the floor, coming up to our low lunge, just trying to negotiate a pelvis that's evenly set between the armpits where the ribs are pulled back over the pelvis and the pelvis is over that right knee. Hopefully you feel that right leg opening, stretching the arms. And then from here, taking the right hand down, 
keeping the hips pulled back as we peel open a little twist, really feeling like you're pulled in and you're, shish, you're turning around like a shish kebab. If you want, you can lift the right knee off the ground there. The pelvis stays nice and level as best you can manage that. And then we'll take the left hand down, turn open to the right, bend into that right knee for a little half squat or side lunge, pulsing a few times. And then coming back through center, up, we'll go ahead and turn open to warrior two to the left, trying to negotiate again. Good feeling joint positions in the lower body where you're hugging up into the pelvis. As you take the arms open, keep your sitting bones hugging together as you start your warrior variations, reaching over the back of the pelvis, then over the front, just offering a little bit of openness to that torso. Mm, okay, from here, we're gonna turn ourselves nice and forward. We're gonna take the hands. Oh wait, what did we do? Nope, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're gonna stand up on the front leg, right knee up, and then you can work with those single leg hip hinges or you can hinge forward, hold the hinge forward, press the right foot back to warrior three. Remember, you have lots of options here. You can bend and straighten the standing leg. You can bend the right knee into the abdomen a few times, so it's all fair game. Breathing. And then lowering the right foot down, we're gonna take the hands down, right knee down, right hand down, opening up to a half side plank, which is much harder to get balanced here than your regular side plank. So give yourselves a second. And then moving at the left hip, drawing the knee in and out, really feeling both buttocks work for you. Okay, from here, coming down to plank pose, stepping the feet back, lifting the ribs up into the shoulders. You decide how you come down to the floor. Once you come all the way down there, releasing and relaxing there, hands stack, forehead down. Okay, remember what we did last time, pubis bone down, uh, navel up. We're gonna release the hands to cactus and start pulsing here, keeping that sensation in the belly. Chin tucks into the throat. Now we'll change it. We'll take the elbows underneath the shoulders, peel the ribs up into the shoulder blades, tuck the toes, forearm plank. Mm-hmm. Coming down onto the knees, softening down, cactus, pulses, chin stays tucked. And then elbows down, ribs peel up, knees lift, forearm plank. One more time, knees down, coming all the way down, cactus pulses. We can do it. Elbows down, ribs lift. If you want, walk your feet in, dolphin pose, chin tucked, lifting the ribs up. If you feel strong enough to invert here in something, you're welcome to come into a forearm balance or anything like that. When you're ready to come down, come down, come up to the hands. And here we go for just a few cat-cow movements. And then really trying to free the fascia here. We'll come into our cat position, our nice rounded flexed spine. Okay, we're going to try to keep that flexed spine so that the back fascia is nice and open as we shift the hips back towards the heels any amount. Hopefully you feel some goodies there. Shifting back up, doing that a couple of times. And when you come up, we'll come to our cow pose, our little back bend shape, still feeling like the front of the body's hugging in. Remember what we said about weight bearing shoulder positions, externally rotated. So all of that is still true. 
Now we're gonna get into the front fascia as we stretch back any amount, trying to hold that shape. Mm. Coming forward, I can really feel that in the low abdomen. Just doing that a couple of times. Okay, how do your wrists feel here coming forward, coming to neutral spine, walking the hands around, maybe so that the fingers face back towards the knees. From here, we're gonna cap the spine, so flex the spine again, bend the elbows, and lean back until you really feel a stretch through um, like the soft underside of your forearms. Those are your wrist flexors. And those are the ones that are working all day when we're driving, texting, gripping, typing, that kind of stuff. So now we just get to turn them off a little bit. Prepare them for tomorrow when we're gonna have to do more of that. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead from here, come around to a comfortable seated position. In your seated position, there's lots of ways to come down to your back. I'm just gonna kinda take it easy tonight. So you do what feels right for you. Pulling the knees into the armpits. We wanna feel the sacrum on the ground. So in fact, like, knee, like hands around the knees, rolling around a bit, seeing if you can find your sacrum. So that's like your fusion of low back bones in between your little back dimples on the back. And that's actually where your spine and your pelvis connect and come together at the SI joint. So seeing if you can feel your sacrum on the ground, lightly spread your knees apart, knees toward the armpit. Take your hands underneath your thighs on your hamstrings as you lift your feet up towards the sky. So the knees are still drawing down, but the feet press up. Now only do this as much as you can keep your sacrum on the floor and lightly pull your knees down towards your armpits, keeping the sacrum down. Hopefully you're starting to feel some nice opening through the groin. Easy deep breathing into the abdomen. Ribs down, chin tucked to the throat. You can always put a pillow under your head if that feels better in this position. And then from here, drawing the knees in. Now roll the tailbone up. So actually roll your sacrum off the ground and opening the arms into a T. From here, we're going to keep the knees drawing in towards the left armpit as the legs roll over to the left, to the ground, and your right shoulder will probably pop up off the ground. So if it feels comfortable there, that's great. If it doesn't, maybe you can call out to someone, friend, husband, children, dog, bring me a pillow. Put the pillow underneath that shoulder and that should help. Um, but just wherever the, the lifted shoulder is, you can just find a position that works for you. Now, the reason why I say keep the knees tucked into the armpits is that this will help you open up that whole back side of the body. So feel like your whole front side, all of your organs is all slurping into the back of your body, really opening that up. Coming back through center. Knees again, draw in so your tailbone lifts as you draw over to the right. When you draw over to the right, again, you're trying to get the knees towards the armpit, right? As best you can. That's gonna open that back side of the body. If it's okay for you to close your eyes here, close your eyes. If you're in a dark room, that's nice. If it, there's a lot of lights above you, maybe you can ask a friend to turn them off for you. Okay, and then coming back through center, any last movements that are gonna feel good to you? Before we formally go to Shavasana, we'll go to Shavasana, then we'll actually do a little seated meditation, which I think is always nice to end the practice with. But I'll do my little YouTube spiel here, which is please make sure you're subscribed. We would love in 2020 to reach 1,000 subscribers, so help us reach that goal by subscribing and sharing our channel with your friends. And if, you know, if you want to get these links into your inbox, make sure you're signed up for our weekly letter. That's a free newsletter. It comes to your email every Sunday. I write a lot of blog posts. I share a lot of educational stories about this type of movement, why it's so good for us, how, it, how you can expect it to help you over time. So make sure you're signed up for that. And then, of course, 
Um, if you are really jiving with this and it's doing a lot of good things for you, please consider supporting this work with a donation. I have a link to our Patreon in the description below. So we would just love it if you would join us over there because the more uh, support we get over there, the more we can carve out resources to make this a bigger part of our lives and of your life. So go ahead and find a comfortable position to lay out in, even if you like abandon your yoga mat and go to the couch or something like that, totally cool. Because you definitely wanna give yourself a few good minutes here of letting the body go completely soft, completely limp. And when I first come down, I kinda like to just shake it all out, just, just shake it all out. then you definitely don't want to be battling with discomfort. So negotiate a position that is, is comfortable for you or as comfortable as you can get right now so that your mind isn't preoccupied with anything. And then keep breathing in and out through your nose because your nose is for breathing, your mouth is for eating but let the breath go really soft and light, deep in the belly, the same way that your body breathes when it's breathing for nutrients and efficiency when you're sleeping. And let your facial muscles go soft, almost like they could melt off your face. Your forehead softens, your inner eye crease, where your tear ducts are, those soften, your outer eye crease. Deepen your eye sockets, your cheeks, your jaw, your tongue. Hold on to nothing here, because when you're holding on to nothing, your nervous system is feeling safe. And when your nervous system feels safe, it will give you more benefits from this practice, because it's really up to your nervous system how much strength and mobility and stability you get from everything that you did today. It's really up to your nervous system how much pain, tightness, or inflammation you have. So getting yourself to this place of ease, rest, relaxation is the best thing you can do to get the most out of your practice. Now, to end our practice, I'll offer us about five minutes of silent sitting, a little meditation. So if you'd like to do that here, lying on your back, that's totally fine. But if you'd like to come to a seat, start moving your body, but keeping the spirit of Shavasana, all of that softness, that relaxation. And as your movements gradually build, Come up to a seat in the gentlest, softest way that you can muster. And get yourself comfortable in a seat, whether that's on the floor or in an ottoman or on a chair, all of that is fair game. But really the purpose of the movement practice of yoga is to get us to a place where we can sit in silence and in self-inquiry. And so when I think about the purpose of yoga like that, it really opens up the, the movement portion of it in my mind. And it doesn't make me feel so stuck with 
you know, a classical Surya Namaskar or a traditional vinyasa or ashtanga type of practice. And it really kind of blows open those boundaries and it makes me wonder, well, what, what kind of movement experience could I offer myself that will help me in the process of self-inquiry, in the process of being the best manager of my life that I can be so that I'm experiencing more peace, more harmony, more satisfaction every single day. the goal of your silent sitting is not to make your mind be quiet because we can't really achieve that as a task of itself but it's more so the process of self-inquiry is to recognize and realize that we are more than our thoughts so let your attention go broad let it contain your thoughts but let it contain so much more so that your thoughts become just one small aspect of your experience and that you're more plugged into the vastness of your experience and that you'll see has an impact in your what your feelings are even your perceptions how you see yourself how you see others all of that will be impacted when we can renegotiate our relationship with our thoughts So great job tonight. We made it all the way through our practice. Continue practicing this. If you can come back to this practice every day, I bet your body will start to work and feel better day after day. Uh, your body also needs variety, so do different classes every day. That will also help with it. And carve out this time, five minutes a day. We all have it to sit and be quiet, even if your mind is a big jumbled mess and it's running all over the place, you will see that over time, slowly, it will have a positive impact on your life.